The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So one of my children had a rough day at school. One of those real rough days. You get like the third, sc- third call from the principal, you just press ignore, like deal with it yourself. And he was out of this class and that class, and he did well on this test. And he came in, I saw when he put down this briefcase, it was just one of those days. I wasn't going to ask him to do homework. I knew the answer, and he ate, and he went to his room, and I come back from night Seder, and it's like 12 o'clock at night. Everyone's sleeping. It was an early night. And <laughs> I go into my son's room, and I wake him up. I said, wake up, wake up. Huh? Wake up, wake up. It's not chakras. You get out of bed fast. Get out of bed, get out of bed. He's like, Dad, he looks at the clock. He's like, it's 12.15. Did I miss? I'm like, no, it's a.m. He says, Dad, what are you? I'm like, come, come. Get. He comes out in his PJs, puts on his shoes, take him to the car. He says, Tati, where are we going? So we're going to 7-Eleven. He said, huh? 7-Eleven, yeah, we're going to go get a Slurpee. He said, huh? We go to 7-Eleven. It's now 1 o'clock in the morning. And we got a Slurpee. And he's like, Tati, <laughs> what's going This is awesome, first of all. Why'd you get me a Slurpee? I said, it's because I love you. You didn't do well on the test. You had a really rough day at school. But I love you anyway. Now, I wish I'd be always on top of my game like this. I just heard a class and I was inspired. I was in great daddy mode. Let's be the perfect Tati. A relationship is not based on grades. It's not based on how they daven. A Rebbe of mine once told me, he said, don't raise from children. Raise happy children. They'll be from Now, of course, we need discipline and we need to have a house with rules and we have to have standards, of course. But we can't afford to lose what's most important. And that is our relationship with them. That same son, when he was bar mitzvah, I decided I want to do something special for him. It was right after COVID, Depends when you ask. Some people, was no COVID, COVID. But this was right after COVID. And I decided I wanted to take him to New York. We're going to do some shopping and go around to different gedolim and brachos. A father-son trip. And it was nice. My son, you know, loves going around me and going for brachos. But I decided I wanted to take this up an ante. i have already taken off a few days of teaching. My son really, really likes sports. So I decided I want to take him to a basketball game. I'm going to get really, really good seats. And I'm going to take him to a basketball game. And we have this thing. When we went to a basketball game, we bring our, uh, a safer. We watch the game. At certain points, we learn. That was, uh, we used to do that. I didn't do it in a while, especially COVID game. It was very, very hard to find any sports arenas that were open. And I found that there's a basketball team in Florida... The Toronto Raptors, they came to Florida to play over there. Only they're selling like seven, 8,000 tickets. They're in Tampa Bay. And we can get to Florida, we can go to that game. I didn't tell him. So I pick him up from Yeshiva. We go to LAX. And my son is very organized. He likes doing things on time, being there early. And I'm not the most on-time type of guy. <laughs> I come a little, a little more Heimish. And my son says, Tati, please, if we're doing this trip already, can we just do it my way? I said, of course. And we show up like 20 minutes before the flight. And as we come, we pull up over there, and they take my ticket. It's not going through. They say, uh, sir, this ticket is for next week. And already my son goes, Tati, we didn't even like, start our trip. <laughs> I say, hold on. I'm used to this. I run to the guy. I get a new ticket. I come back. We go through security. I forgot my hat. He runs back out to get it. We're running. We make the plane by the skin of our teeth. 
Anyway, to make a long story short, the trip ended up being more my way. We get to the store, the suit store on Arab Shabbos. They closed. They said he could pick out suits, but they didn't put back on the lights. So we're using a flashlight to pick out his suit. But it was just like, okay, well, I'm trying to make it fun. I'm making a schmack. And meanwhile, I know about the secret trip that I have that he has no clue. So Sunday morning, we went to Rav Shmuel. We drove down to Philly. We got a bracha. We went to Lake. We went to Rakhi. We're going all around. That evening, I say, I'm going on another trip. He's like, what now? I really just want to relax. I'm like, just one more little trip. He says, okay. I go on the highway. And he sees me pulling into Newark Airport. He says, Tati, we're going back already? I'm like, oh, we're going somewhere else. Like, but I'm not telling you where we're going. Now, that year, I was in Avel. My father passed away at uh, the beginning of COVID. And in order for me to make this happen, I needed to make sure that I can get a minion when I land. So I got an exact flight. The chesed had to be work out perfect. That if I rent a car at three o'clock, I get to the Tampa at I believe it was four forty-five. Showed an hour and a half. I gave myself fifteen minutes. It's one reason why you say I run late. I don't <laughs> give too much expansion time. I'll make the mincha mar by the chabad over there, and we're gonna go straight to the game. So now, while I was trying to find all these different tickets, I was going through all these different airports. I went to Philly, I went to here. Anyway, to make a long story short, we land in Florida. And my son is so excited. He still doesn't know exactly where we're going. When we land, I tell him, Tati, we're going to the basketball game. Oh, you're the best. What's up? I'm like, super father. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I come off. And I go to the, to the rental. I book the rental. I'm all organized. And uh, I get to Avis. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Jeski. And they put in my name, type that. Sorry, sir. I'm like, let me sorry. There's no rental cars. I'm like, what do you mean? They say, look around. I look around. And the airport is packed. It was like NASCAR racing weekend. Everyone's in. They said, we don't have one rental car. I said, I have a reservation. They said, what's your reservation? X, Q, V, R. I don't know why they all do all these letters. I give them the, all the letters of the alphabet. They say, uh, sir, you reserved a car in Philadelphia. And my son's like, Tati. I'm like, hold on, hold on. There's a reason why I did that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you why. It's Kabbalah reasons. So I'll tell you another time. Uh, and <laughs> I'm like, I really like, well, we have no cars. I'm like, is there any type of car? He points down there. They said, well, there's this luxury car rental that you can go down. Which maybe they might have. I'm walking with my son. I already like took out a mortgage to pay for this. They only have luxury cars left. My son's like, yeah. So I end up renting this like crazy convertible. And it was the only car that they had left. And I still have to get down to this middle class. So I get the car. Anyway, the, 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 the top is down. We're like blasting my Yammy Boys choir. Like, Rev Hawk, Rev Hawk, Rev Hawk. Whoa, we're driving down. Flying all of a sudden, only in Florida, it starts to pour. <laughs> Pouring rain, hailing, like Bacchus Burrard. Things are, and you can't close the thing. So I can't, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take the wheel. He's like, Tati, I'm too young. I'm like, okay. We're driving Mom, is, things are hitting me in the head. We get, we're able to pull to the side. I close the top. We drive. I pull up to the, to the Chabad. It was like, they didn't have like real cement. It was all muddy. Everything gets dirty. I'm walking in mud. I pull and I make the last Kaddish of Mencha. I make Kaddish. I dava Mencha. Now, we're back in the car. Now, I bought these tickets. I bought VIP tickets. VIP tickets. The tickets cost me over $600. I said, you know what, there's something nice. I'm doing, I'm with my son, I know, it sounds crazy. And it says VIP, four, six, whatever, and it has the address, and I'm driving around trying to find the spot. And Aaron's like, Tati, I really want to make it on time. I'm like, okay, okay, we're going to get there. I'm driving, driving around. I, I keep on seeing the basketball place, but it's taking me somewhere else. I keep on putting it back into ways. And it keeps on putting me in front of this building. So I said, okay, put me in front of this building. Maybe it's like a special weird place to park. I pull into this building, and there I see it. I bought two parking spaces. <laughs> because of this COVID studio, they were selling parking spaces at VIP. I spent $600 for two parking spaces. And my son now doesn't even know what to say. He's like, I can't believe you're my father. I, 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 where did you come from? Like, <laughs> I, I felt so stupid. I'm like, oh. Uh. 
Imagine the seats. If these are the parking tickets, I had no tickets left. I had no money left. I'm like, okay, here we go. So we, we park in this place. I said, Aaron, we're going to get into the stadium. I'm going to make it up for you. And my son said, I can't believe he's my father. I can't believe he's my father. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm feeling so stupid. And we walk up. And we go all the way up. I said, I'm just going to pay whatever it is. I get up to the stadium. And they were closed. They decided a few days earlier, because there was some COVID outbreak, that they're not playing. And now me and my son are in Florida, wet, muddy, dirty, standing in front of this empty arena with $600 parking tickets. And at this point, I look at him, and he just starts laughing. That was the only emotion he gave. I don't know what he was laughing at me, with me. I was not asking any questions. I said, okay, you know, uh, let's go play some arcades. Everything's closed. We drive all the way back to Orlando. I find this kosher burger store there. Most expensive burger I got in my life, if you make the calculation. What? Oh, yeah, I sold one of the wheelchair ripers or something like that. I go back and then... I find this ar- ar- arcade, arcade place that was still open over there. She went there for an hour. Now I start driving around. There were no hotel rooms because everything was booked. So I end up staying in Motel Negative 6. I didn't even know there was such a thing. You have to like, bring your own linen and your own bed. And we walk into this place. And I wake up, wake him up at like 6 in the morning because we had an early flight. And everything was just like disaster. I'm like, Aaron, they said they have a pool. Let's go pool. Apparently, they had a big mikvah uh, over there that like wasn't cleaned in like, you know, six years. We went for an early swim. Had to take a shower after we went for that swim. And we end up back at the airport right where we came from. We flew to Orlando for a burger. And we're sitting in the back of the plane. And we're getting ready to take off. I'm just steering out the window. I remember I'm just steering out the window. And I keep on saying to myself, Majeski, how did you blow this? How did you blow this? I mean, I wasn't too shocked at myself because, but in a way I was, like this, even for me, this was, and I'm telling my wife, giving her updates the whole time. And she's like, oh my gosh. Like, she like feels so bad for my son. And I, I, I keep on saying everything in my life is like, tell the kids to say to Hillam, I'm running for a flight. So my kids are all saying to Hillam for this whole trip. I'm sitting looking out the window. I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? And I look at Aaron. I say, Aaron, I just want to say, uh, sorry. I'm sorry I messed this up. And my son looks at me and says, Tati, this was the best trip ever. I'm like, Q-tips, Stuart? Q-tips? I'm like, what? It's Tati. This was awesome. This was so much fun. I said, Aaron, like, I mean, this is like the botch up of all botch ups. Like, <laughs> I paid six hundred dollars for parking tickets. Like, even I can't believe myself. He says, Tati, I got to spend so much time with you. I just got to spend so much time with you. I turned to the Simon. Time, real time, unadulterated time, real heart, real openness, real love. That's what they want. We brought these children into into our world. And they're more important than anything else. We know that. We have to live with that. And we could. We could give them what they really, really crave and what they need and what's going to help them for the rest of their life. And that is building a relationship. Thank you so much. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.